All right, guys, bad neighborhoods in ancient Rome. Guys, they had bad neighborhoods. I got bad neighborhoods in my city, but let's check it out. For 500 years, Rome was the biggest, richest, and most spect- Oh, snap, the collapse of Rome, you know. My history teacher, like, uh, made analogies to, uh, you know, America, and there being a clap. A, a, a crash of America, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, it's the greatest country. Spectacular city on Earth. It was also the most dangerous. What? Every bath. Guys, are, 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 are big cities dangerous as well? I think they are, right? And alleyway had its thieves and thugs. And even after Augustus... Hey, bro, I mean, it's a boom in town. They're probably, they're trying to rob some ri rich... I'm rich full. Put a stop to the street fighting gangs of the late Republic. Violent crime remained a problem. Street fighting gangs. Ancient authors mention murderers, guilds of criminals, and even a mysterious group of assassins who killed their victims with poisoned needles. Bro, that's too much, man. Assassins? Like Assassin's Creed? Oh my gosh. I can't believe they're doing that. Oh man. Firemen patrolled Rome's streets at night, and soldiers of the urban cohorts were stationed in public places during the day. Neither did much to suppress the crime rate. The urban cohorts, in fact, routinely contributed to the problem by extorting protection money. The Praetorian Guard, who were sometimes called in as riot police... So they are the police, man. First of all, if a riot police has... If the riot police get called in, you know it's gonna go down, bro. We just recently saw what happened with the Kai Sinet situation, man. And that was terrible, man. Police were even worse and became notorious for casually beating and abusing innocent citizens. Hey. <laughs> Not that different from USA, right? Some good old police brutality. Crime was not focused. It's not good, but yeah. Focused in any one can't can't go without it. It seems in this world. One part of ancient Rome. Although some neighborhoods were richer than others, there was nothing like the clear separation of high and low income areas found in many modern cities. Throughout Rome, the mansions of the elite stood side by side with low rent apartments and modest shops. Let's take a closer look. This is a map of Rome around the year 300. Bro, I wonder how, how long it took them to, like, map this out, bro. They said the year 300? Oh my gosh. That's so long ago, man. They, they, have, they, 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 have, they have much, guys, right? <laughs> Imagine living during then, though. That would be so interesting, bro. Now there's uh, 500 different video games about Rome. And, like, you know, medieval kind of games, bro. RuneScape... <laughs> you know, oh my gosh. What if there were actually were dragons and stuff? The outer dark line represents the Aurelian Walls, which marked the edge of the Imperial City. The inner line traces the old Republican Walls, long disused and built over by this point in the city's history. Much of the city center was off-limits to housing. The Forum and Imperial Fora, the Capitoline Hill with its temples, the Palatine Hill with its palaces, the Colosseum, and Circus Maximus. Few Romans, likewise, lived in the Campus Martius. Hey bro, it's so completely off limits, bro. Oh my gosh. The low-lying area in the bend of the Tiber, since this district was also filled with public buildings. Can't be in a business district. You think they had like um like a security guards at like business districts like they do? In the USA, guys? The huge imperial bath complexes took up neighborhood-sized tracts of land. So did the vast private gardens along the edges of the city. In short, everyone in Rome, besides the emperors and the wealthiest aristocrats, had to live in the spaces between all those red circles. Hey, that's like 50% of the place, but yeah. That sucks. The houses of the elite, as mentioned, were scattered throughout the city, but there were clusters of mansions in a few areas, usually on the summits of hills, which were likelier to catch breezes during the sweltering summer. Sweltering? I wonder how hot it got during then, bro, because 
Apparently we had the hottest year in in history, guys, but it might have been hotter back then. Who knows? Who knows, right, guys? One such cluster was on the crest of the Quirinal Hill, where aristocratic residences lined an ancient thoroughfare called Alta Semita. Even the ruling, even a ruling class in, in the, these type of times, man, sad game, sad game. Uh, High Street. There were other groups of mansions along the parks of the Esquiline and Kylian Hills. During the first and second centuries, in an early instance of gentrification, elite houses displaced the historically working-class neighborhoods atop the Aventine Hill. Dang, they're even trying to displace the, uh, the working class, bro? And... So, where were the less salubrious parts of the city? Rome's iconic rough neighborhood was the Sabura, in the swampy valley between the Esquiline and Viminal Hills. Roman authors dwell on the neighborhood's filthy streets, cheap taverns, and cheaper brothels. But, as in most parts of the city, there were pockets of affluence. For years, Caesar had a house there. The Emporium, Rome's warehouse district... Caesar himself, bro? Oh, snap. He's trying to have fun in brothels or something? <laughs> was another unsavory part of town, inhabited mostly by dock workers and itinerant merchants. Oh my gosh, it'd be so cool to time travel back then, bro, just to see how it was. It would be so easy to, like, film a, a movie as well, right, guys? Or make a documentary. But it, we just had still images. It didn't help that the whole neighborhood smelled like rancid olive oil. The heck were they making? Since it stood beside a gigantic mound of broken oil amphorae. Trastevere, across the river, was a crowded working-class district, home to many recent immigrants. It was not an especially rough neighborhood, but it wasn't respectable either. Everybody who was anybody lived on the other side of the Tiber. The Vatican... Yeah, I wonder how uh, big this place is. Like, is it the size of a state or something, bro? It, it's a giant place, bro, but it's just like... We're at, it, apocalypse, literally apocalypse hit this place. Like, it, Outside the Aurelian Walls was a patchwork of clay pits, working-class cemeteries, and scraggly vineyards that made the worst wine in Rome. It wasn't the worst ride. a dangerous area, but it wasn't a place to linger, either. This video belongs to the Time Traveler's Guide to Ancient Rome series, which provides advice to those hypothetically possessing the means, motive, and opportunity to visit the ancient city. So, let's talk practicalities. If you were to somehow time travel to ancient Rome, which parts of the city would you be best advised to avoid? Obviously, probably the uh, most dangerous parts, in my opinion. You are much more likely to be mugged in the Sabura than on High Street. But it's not so much neighborhoods you have to watch out for, as it is trouble spots within those neighborhoods. It's still like USA, right, guys? You can you go to the neighbor if you go to uh, the rough neighborhood next to a police station, there will be less crime than usual, right? Time travelers who find themselves in ancient Rome's seedier areas should avoid bars, barbers, and brothels. Yeah, guys, I, I avoid bars myself, guys. Like, you know, I'm good on going to a bar. Bars first. Roman bars, Tiburni or Calponi, were places to get a quick bite or long drink. They served simple hot food and cheap wine and were popular neighborhood watering holes. They often doubled, however, as brothels, and were centers of illegal gambling. In a neighborhood like the Sabura, entering one would likely attract unwanted attention. Second, barbers. What, you ask, was wrong with barbers? Just one thing. They talked too much. And they had barbers back then as well? Yeah, bro, nobody... I mean, you kind of need a, a specialist to cut your hair nowadays, guys, but I just cut it myself. Just go, shh, 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 if I wanted to. But we are growing our hair out here, guys. Most Roman barbers worked outside, often on a street corner, where they tended to keep a steady stream of conversation going with their clients. And bro, they even got business practices to become your friend and stuff, guys. With neighborhood idlers 
and with anybody else within earshot. Hanging out near a barber would thus be a surefire way to let every criminal in the neighborhood know where to find the confused-looking foreigner. Bro, they, they even got tourism, guys, man. It, it's not that different from our civilization, guys. Finally, brothels. If you happened, by purest accident... Bro, a stone bed? Okay, that, that's not comfortable. That's like jail. Jail has stone beds. In the holding cells, man, it's not fun. And ...to stumble into a Roman brothel, you would do best to stumble right back out. Quite aside from the other hazards of patronizing such places, you would stand an excellent chance of being robbed. Dang, so they're trying to lure us in, it seems. Good bodyguard material. If you plan to spend a substantial part of your visit in dangerous situations, you might want to hire a bodyguard. A good bodyguard, preferably a retired gladiator. I thought, I thought the giant freaking lion was going to be our bodyguard. That'd be cool. Would deter all but the most determined thieves. Unfortunately, some bodyguards were thieves themselves. What? So choose your associates carefully. Regardless of whether you decided to hire a bodyguard, you could avoid most problems simply by not drawing attention to yourself and, above all, not venturing out at Guys, when I was younger, I used to always go venture out at night, man. Night. After dark. Especially without your bodyguard, that's what celebrities do. Ancient Rome was a no-man's land. Time travelers tend to fare poorly. You'll find other useful... I said time traveler, bro. Tips. I wish I was a time traveler, that'd be cool. ...about surviving a hypothetical trip to ancient Rome in my forthcoming book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants. You'll find additional time travel gear on the Tolton Stone Patreon page. Stay tuned for the next installment of A Time Traveler's Guide to Ancient Rome. And thanks for watching. Yeah, nice video, nice video. But yeah, guys, uh, I will put his Patreon in the description, guys. Let's, um, let's read a few comments. Not venturing at, out at night is generally basic advice. Yeah, man. There might be lions. Mind-blowing when you realize that most of our modern urban problems were already faced uh, by these people 2,000 years ago. Roman wants to blow Walks into a bar and asks for Martinez. Do you mean a martini? Said the barber. Roman says, if I wanted to, I'd ask for it. I don't get it. Loads of time travelers should avoid these locations and situations. And vice. <laughs> Heck yeah, Ancient Rome Hood Tour. Yeah, unfortunately we don't have video footage of it. You came to the wrong hood, plebeian. You came to the wrong hood, you, um, higher class individual. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. Yeah, that's the video, guys. Check out Told and Stone in the description. I'll see you guys next one, okay? Thank you for watching. I do all my reactions live on Twitch. And, uh, yeah. Please consider donating, subscribing, and yeah, see you guys next time.